welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Uh, who do we have here up at the top to my right? You can catch them in between motivational platforms, supporting clients in the physical and mental wellness, closing culture ga gaps. Mr. Rio Winfrey, Rio Fitness. What's good? It's good. Good morning, everyone. Very, hey, hey. Very, very excited to uh, chat with Suzette. Love the family. Uh, love people. Let's do it. Let's get it started. Making the world a little smaller by connecting powerhouse companies with superior brands, creating opportunities, and funneling in the dollars. Mr. Antoine Watts of PIP Injury. Hey, greatly, greatly, greatly excited to be here. Suzette, thank you for coming on. I got some real stories about Suzette. She was very real with me a year ago. So oh, I, have, I have a story <laughs> about that. I can't wait to get into it. <laughs> At the corner of cultural diversity and leadership, making a sharp right on investment ab while bringing a few young soldiers with him, Mr. Brian McKinney, McKinney Brands. Get up, B. What's going on? What's going on, everybody? Hey, Suzette, thank you again for being here. Suzette's like my, she's like another sister. Um, and uh, so it's it's uh, just great to have you back. Um, obviously, we did this last year um, around this time in a different setting. Um, and so let's make this an annual thing and maybe we do it even more frequently, you know, than annually. So like we're about to get into it, y'all. Uh, thanks for coming. Okay. For well, the real, see, I'm thinking everybody really knows you because of the platforms and the stages that you've commanded and the audiences and the, um, the businesses that you've brought along the way. If anybody has on their, their Facebook feed, please turn that off and get some background. Um, so all that's off on all of us. Um, but Suzette Sternberg is an award-winning author, speaker, and founder uh, and CEO of Incoming Marketing. Her experience includes a successful 20-year tenure in management, marketing, branding, and social media marketing. Suzette is the author of The Ultimate Guide to Understanding and Getting Started with Social Media. She's currently a doctoral candidate at Ashford University for some organizational development and leadership with a specialization in social media and technology. <laughs> Notable clients have included Henry Fernandez Ministries, the Global Mega Ministry, Casey Lynn Jewelry, a multi-million dollar beauty and accessory brand, Gavin, an international acclaimed recording artist, Terrell Spencer, former NFL athlete author and senior pastor. These clients, along with countless others, have attributed their online brand recognition to Suzette Turnbull and her company. So we're going to let you know how to find her so you can add yourself to the client roster. Thank uh, you so much for having me. I'm, I'm truly excited to be here. And I just want you all to know that um, did my eyebrows and put on some lipstick just for many hands podcast. <laughs> I'm just saying. I haven't done that in months. <laughs> right? I, I personally am afraid for the next time I have to wear heels. I'm like, my, my body's not going to understand. I know, right? <laughs> it's going to be a serious, serious problem. That's why we can relate to any of that. We just get up and go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, real, so, oh, I'm sorry. Real quick. Oh, I apologize. Next time that I think I'm busy, that I think I'm a busy person, I have a busy life, Mm -hmm. I'm going to think about a few other people, uh, Suzette being one of them, because I that that's a lot. Um, so I don't know how you do it, but hey, kudos to you. I know I tell Brian and Owen and Rio this all the time about themselves. I don't know how y'all do it. So it's it greatly inspires me. So, hey, thank you all for the inspiration today. I appreciate y'all. Yeah. Hey. Rio well, hit me with the namaste. Rio, <laughs> <laughs> namaste. <laughs> See, I don't even know why he's playing. We'll talk about what he has brewing in a minute. But oh, okay, yeah, good, good. you know, so part much. of my therapy is to accept the compliment, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're there. Um, so uh, I've known Suzette, like I said, over 10 years. Um, B and I have been married for how long now? Seven years. And you were at our wedding. So that that's when the in-law ship happened. Um, mm -hmm. And then last year, I introduced you to Tuan uh, because we were all on the stage for the podcast movement conference, um, which is actually coming back around again this October. Um, just a little shout out to them, you know, get on podcastmovement.com, attend the conference this year. Mark Cuban's going to be there. So there is um, 
just so much information. I remember you guys, because it's like a week long conference and uh, B and Twan came back one night after doing all sorts of like um, networking. And it was such like, they were on fire. They're like, oh, 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 this is who we met. This is what's going on. So yeah. it was, it was kind of, they do a really good job. And logistically, you know, if you go to some conferences, right. you just like, where should I be? What's going on? And the app has you GPS friendly, right, right to the, your platform. You're like, oh, oh, and thanks for the bottle of water. I'm ready to stop, you know? By far, that was the a, conference I've been a part of. Absolutely. That was like a technology case study. Like mm -hmm. someone yeah. needs to do a case study on how they just killed it with the technology and making life so easy for everyone, organizing it and connecting people. I mean, they killed it. They and that's why I'm, I'm sorry. That's why I'm excited about this year, because even though it's a, uh, a Zoom online type deal, they mm -hmm. were so good with it in person. I just know they'll kill it this year uh, as well. And they couldn't get us this year, so they got Mark Cuban. I mean, hey, yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Second Mark. best, but hey. yeah, it is what it is, bro. <laughs> Nah, that, was such a, good. that was such a good time, man, and and the energy, uh, and like oh, to O's point, the networking, but the energy that that I got personally from that from that conference was um, was second to none, and it carried me for like the remainder of the year, I think. Um, I have a question. I wasn't there. I was there in spirit. Uh, so, from each of you, what was what made the biggest impact, or what was the highlight for you? If you could pick just one. You know, I want to jump in first because what I'm going to say, I'm sure is different from what everyone else is going to say. But for me, it was it was incredible to see how Twan and B, they just shone like they just got up there. And I feel like they stepped into something that they didn't even know that they had. They literally just killed it, you know, um, and, and I was just amazed at how we all came together as a team. <laughs> because we rehearsed the <laughs> night before. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. <laughs> that was for a blooper reel. Like we should have, we should have recorded that. I'm just saying. But the way that they killed it on stage and they engaged with the audience and the way that they delivered, I mean, it was it was just priceless. Mm, yeah. Thank you for that, Suzanne. Thank you. The night before was a. Uh... Yeah, it was detrimental to my ego. Well, I was like, oh, you have to get it together, brother. This is this is not you. And then when you walk in the building and you get the energy, and I was ready to rock. I was like, it was just amazing. Um, but when you get on that stage and then you just start talking to people, right? That's I think all of us are very good with that, just interacting and engaging with people. And then you get that additional energy, and then it's like, let's go. So uh, yeah, but it took some. It's a, it took a real quick intervention, um, so we can get to that place. <laughs> well, we did it. We did it. And what was that intervention? All right. Well, we're just gonna get into it. It's okay. Yeah. So we're sitting at B and O's house, and we're doing the rehearsals the night before. <laughs> and I'm a memorization kind of guy, so I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to memorize this like a week before my my story. Right, like it's my life, but I'm trying to memorize what I want to say, and we we go through it for I don't know a couple hours or whatever. And Susan said, "Let let me talk to you out here for a minute." <laughs> we go out to the dining room area, and she said, "Antoine, there's no reason you should be messing up. This is your story, mm. like it's your life." Gave me chills right there. Why are you trying to remember your life? <laughs> and from that moment forward. Like I literally got rid of probably half the stuff. I came home, did what I had to do, and I just talked through it mm -hmm. for probably another three hours because I was not gonna be the weak link on the not not amongst all this brilliance. It wasn't gonna happen to me and not in public for sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we got to it, got there. Um, literally as soon as we stepped on the stage and they put the mics in our hands and it to even before that, it was just talking to the crowd, like getting that kind of energy and engagement. And people is what I do. So but to that led what led to that really was that I mean it was like a two minute intervention like it really was and Suzanne I really appreciate that because you know I tell people all the time I'm in my own head a lot um, so sometimes it's just not that serious right it's just not so that right there it it made me you know get it together so I appreciate that because I have taken that and 
kind of put that, implemented that in everything else I do. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. That that mini coaching that was free. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What was yours, B? Um so for me it was it was all of that, right? It was the growth. It was all of us coming together. Um we're all very busy. And so getting prepared for for that. Um, it, that event was just a monumental task in itself. Um, but the way we pulled together and um, all sort of just showed up and showed out, um, you know, Owen and Suzette had, have had more speaking experience. So to her point, the way uh, Twan and I showed up was, uh, to, to Suzette's point, the way she, Twan and I showed up was was great. And it was great to, to step into that, um, to that greatness, because, you know, public speaking is something that growing up was, uh, never fun for me and, uh, and almost fearful at times. Um, and to be able to be on that stage and feel the energy in the room, um, to, to feel the impact of, uh, that we were able to have on the people in the room, uh, was great. You know, people came up to us afterwards and we really, we really touched some people. Um, and so that was, um, you know, that was the, the biggest, I think, thing I, I remember, the biggest takeaway aside from, meeting all the people that we met and the different connections and networking we did. I think that was the biggest. You know, for me, as long as O and I have known each other <clears throat> and as an amazing as I know that she is, that was my first time getting to see her in action. Right. That was my first no, time. No, and she masterfully moderated that panel. Yeah. Literally. She yeah, masterfully with one foot. <laughs> with one foot. So for me, it was just such an awesome experience to see my BBF doing, you know, just walking in her lane and, and walking in her gift. And I was just, it, it was the entire thing for me was like an out of body experience. Just, you know, kind of seeing how mm. everyone flowed, you know, because, you know, you all had the the firsthand podcast experience. And so it was, it was just, it was just great to kind of see it all come together. And then after it was over, seeing all the people that came up to you all and lining up to, to talk to you. And it was just, it was fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it really was. It really was. I remember calling you and I said, um, Hey, listen, um, <laughs> <laughs> we need to round out this panel and, um, you know, I need somebody dynamic. So my phone book, doo, 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 speed dial Suzette. And it was, I mean, there were some things to move around, but the first commitment was yes. You're like, I'll absolutely be there. And then you mm -hmm. worried about how to get it done after. And I thought to me, that was just, um, that was just touching to have somebody there for you and to be encouraging and then to share a stage and a platform, especially with your resume involved. I just felt like that was, you know, that was such such a, a, a gesture of, of our relationship and, you know, and your confidence in me. So I appreciate that. Um, in terms of moments, I was kind of, it's interesting because where they had us scheduled, it was on the final day. So <laughs> my mind was like, they better not book flights. <laughs> if I see one bus pull up <laughs> to shuttle, <laughs> I will leave the stage <laughs> and I will manhandle that crew. You know, I was like, so like, this can't be. And, um, but our topic was mastering dynamic conversations. And I knew we had great content and mm -hmm. I created the, um, that title and the direction before any of us, including myself had the meat and potatoes of the project. So it was mm -hmm. some real visionary, yeah, you know, good. make it happen. I said, this is what we're going to talk about. So yeah, it's what you got to figure out how to talk about it. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, but the fact that, um, so many people stayed, so many notable stayed, so many people wanted to hear it. Um, there were learning opportunities and we got so many mentions on, you know, live that people were using on their social media with our captions. And I'm like, okay, um, mm -hmm. you know, enough of the worry, you know, enough of the, um, you know, you know, walk into it, you know, appreciate it. You know, we had something to share and we did it well. And I think to me, just that connection, um, uh, from the intimate connection that we had all the way to the broader broadcast of it. And then the replay, it replays for a year. Um, it was, it was magic. So for me that it, it was something personal. Oh, I want to say something. 
you yeah. thought they, you were like, they better not play us. <laughs> Final day, they better not play us. I was thinking we were keynote speakers. I thought we were the last. I was like, I said, it's the spectrum. I was like, we we on this main stage. It's the last day. I was like, this is a lot. And then we got there and I was ready for it. And then we walked, I was like, oh, okay, we're going to do this too. <laughs> but yeah, man. I was on the other side of that. I said, man, you know, Eric Thomas is going to be out here in the crowd. Um, you know, Les Brown might be here in my mind. That's where it was going. So, hey, <laughs> um, and I'm sure they saw it because it was masterful. Um, that was a fantastic topic, vision, everything worked out masterfully around it all. So we appreciate everything you did for that because you you kind of gave us the format. And I said, oh, I don't really know. Tuan, figure it out. I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. And it was, again, people bring out things that you didn't know you had sometimes. Um, no matter how confident all of us are in what we do, sometimes you just need that, oh, you're going to do it. Because, oh, if you remember that conversation, you mm-hmm. called me on the phone from a meeting that we were all at. And you said, Tom, we got this speaking thing. And you, um, so do you want to do it? I said, well, I don't. So you're going to do it, right? I said, well, <laughs> so you're going to do it. OK, I'm doing it. And that's kind of how it happened. So uh, again, thank you for the push. All right. Polite it's, nudging. Yeah. But I mean, OK, so when we had our grand opening for our restaurant and, um, you know, we went to Tuan because he's, he's a marketing genius. We said, hey, listen, we need people to come out. Bro, wall to wall. Well, we brought, he brought the we whole of Orlando away pizza. Out. I mean, we had some giveaways and some made it fun, but we weren't giving away pizza. Right. It was it were they were real sales. Yeah. And the environment, the atmosphere, and it, you know. And they kept coming. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. A lot. I really yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Sorry, Twan. You also made it like a mini reunion. Um, like she said, you are a marketing genius. There are some people that I hadn't seen in years. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey. Oh, yeah, kids, man. Great, we're great. <laughs> you got a whole family now. <laughs> it was awesome. There's something now, look, about Orlando. Now, when you step out, like when, when there's people you care about that actually that you know will show up for you, because I tell people all the time, we do things for people that, you know, obviously we know we can't do things for us. <clears throat> but see, in this type of relationship, it's not a what can you do for me? It's what do you need? When do you need it? Let's make it happen. And that's what this is. So this is for people who don't know, this is more than a podcast. This is we are real family. Um, we show up for each other and show out. So any any look, appreciate y'all to the folks. Yeah. Thought Thank partners. Um go. Suzette, thank you for balancing the estrogen on the, the <laughs> <laughs> on our team. You know, that's important to me, you know. Um, you could only do the only female in my crew so long. <laughs> Where you're like, listen, I don't know, put down the toilet seat. Like, you're driving me crazy, right? So, wear the badge, you. oh, wear the badge. Wear, <laughs> wear, the, wear that, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, tell me, um, so we're talking about today from speaking up to speaking up. We're all out, connected right? um, and we'll be forever connected now. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, we're talking today about um, speaking up, from speaking up to speaking out. We're all speakers. We want to give you a little bit of the background history on how we, um, came together as speakers. But Suzette, with your speaking career, how did you incorporate that into your marketing business? What was that that pre-thought? You know, what happened for me is that as I was delivering, you know, social media marketing services, um, I met a lot of, you know, solopreneurs and entrepreneurs who didn't necessarily have the budget to hire me to manage their social media. And I realized that they just needed to be taught. And so I have a passion for teaching and I started creating programs where I was launching workshops and programs to teach them. And that's really where the speaking began. And as I would, you know, in true social media fashion, I would talk about that on social media and let people know what I was doing. And I was constantly sharing information and and, and tips. Then I started getting invited to speak at numerous events. And that's really how the the speaking engagements took off. But it's something that I recommend for everyone who is in business, because whatever service that you're delivering, you're a subject matter expert. You cannot help someone else unless you are an expert in that subject. That's what you do every day. And so really your speaking engagements and the information that you're putting out on social media begins with what are the questions that you get asked every day by your clients, by your customers? 
You know, if one person needs to hear it, then many people need to hear it. And so that's kind of where you start with that information. That's the information you start to share. And, and as people see you as a subject matter expert, it builds your credibility. And as it builds your credibility, then people are more likely to want to hire you to deliver those services. Mm. Okay, you see, I took about four questions right there because I, I was going into credibility and I was going to go into should every entrepreneur do it? <laughs> just, okay, no problem, no problem. So, but, but where I shine are questions. So, so that's when we have a professional. That's to see you see how that worked out. <laughs> like, ding, ding, ding. So, let me ask you a question: When you're looking at, um, you know, speakers. What what attracts you? Like, who is the most dynamic speaker that you have heard? Oh man! Um, and anybody anybody could jump in, but it matters. I want to get this right. I met her at an event where um, where she spoke, and I want to make sure Gloria. I think Banks is her last name. Give me a second because I really want to get it right. Yeah, Gloria Banks, mm. and um, she's senior level for Mary Kay. Mm -hmm. And I met her at an event where she was the keynote speaker and I was completely blown away by her to the point where I'm following her now on Instagram mm. and she is dynamic. She is beautiful. She has this energy. The energy alone is contagious. Her smile lights up the entire room and it's genuine. It's not just a beautiful smile with pearly whites. It's, it's a smile that actually impacts you. And mm -hmm. so it's the whole package of what you bring, because that's what really impacts people. What impacts people is your energy. It's your yeah. sincerity. It's your authenticity. That's what impacts people. Not with, you know, I have this script of things that I want to say and I deliver it. You have to touch people right here where it matters and engage them. And once you do that and you pull them in, that's yeah. where the connection happens. That's where the impact happens. And so that's what I look for when I look for speakers. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. You guys, um, do you have a speaker that you want to mention? Uh, for me, it was um, Eric Thomas, uh, ET, the hip hop preacher. Um, I've seen him uh, in person twice, and both times he, um, the energy that he brings uh, to the room is, it, it's just like nothing I've ever. You know, you want to run through the through the wall. You want to do whatever it is that you need to do um, to get, you know, to get you to the next step. And um, he is incredibly honest and real uh, with his story. Um, it's one that everybody can sort of relate to, uh, with struggle um, through triumph. And, um, and it's, it's hard work, you know, he didn't, he didn't get there, get where he is by accident um, and by luck. It was through work and, um, it, he's just so relatable and, uh, you know, he's since, um, put other people on and, you know, the, the, the amount of people he touches is, is immense. Um, so. I would, yeah. And you actually, um, you guys both went to see him, uh, you and Twan in, uh, Philly. Was that last year or the year before? Two years ago. Was it? Man. Yeah, it popped up on our memories not not too long ago, actually, a couple weeks ago, actually. Yeah. Um, but and just kind of piggybacking off B, ET just has the uh, energy. I always tell people when we have meetings, um, they want to do phone calls. I said, no, I need to be. I need you to feel my energy. So we at least need to do a Zoom, or I need to be there. One of the two. Uh, and and those guys are very much like that. And ET's my, you know, you guys know how I feel about Eric Thomas, but Inky Johnson. Um. Uh, Inky was at that same conference and, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, he is just as dynamic, uh, probably, I mean, at that time, probably not as polished, but, um, you don't need, I, I don't need perfection. I need your, your energy. I need your story and I need you to, to impact the way I feel about it. So when I leave, I'm going to continuously tell other people about you and my friends, I know they got sick and tired of hearing about Inky. Uh, they got sick and tired of hearing about Eric Thomas. Toby Igniwe, Igniwe, <laughs> I'm yes. sorry, Toby, I apologize, but uh, just his musical talents at that, that, that conference as well. And mm -hmm. um, we will find a way to get that crew into Orlando and Orange County. I believe they already may have a deal with Orange County, but we're going to find a way to make that happen because 
kids need to feel that and they need to to hear that truth. Um, and he speaks to all ages. It's amazing. Awesome. I would go with, and I wish I could just switch up a little bit. Um, so I never honestly paid too much attention um, as far as like motiv motivational speakers. Um, actually, B and Twan uh, introduced me to ET. I um, mean, like B said earlier, the Echo Dad is definitely somebody you can relate to. He looks like me. He talks about the struggles. Um, so along with ET, I also want to say Gary V. Um, he's a little bit more non-traditional, you know, with the language and everything, but I really enjoy it because he's speaking real stuff also. Um, he's giving yeah. to you straight, no chaser. And so Gary V uh, and ET are probably my top two. Yeah, and he gives you information that you can use, Gary. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's very applicable. Yeah. That's I how I feel about like free knowledge. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. That's how I talk I think about with like with the field group that we have. Um people are so, they hold information so tight that it's, they can't even open themselves up to get it. Yeah. So when you find somebody who's willing, I'm not telling you to give away services for free because I don't believe in that. I believe in revenue producing activities. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but when people are giving you like, they want to charge you a thousand dollars for something you can find on Google, like stop it. Right. You know, I'm, I'm with you for the secret <laughs> sauce, not for the general knowledge. General knowledge, let's, let's build, let's, you know, do the resource sharing. So it's very powerful. Absolutely. When you find somebody to, to that's willing to do that, um, I um, I heard Michelle Obama speak um, last year, and you know you're expected to be moved by such a big name, but to me because she's more quiet, and I feel like I'm quiet, and you know she you know perceived as guarded, and I'm not. People have called me like, oh, you kind of. I'm not secret. I'm private, you know, but I'm not secretive. Ask me a question. I'll let you know, you know, and I saw that, but I saw that within that quiet demeanor was such a strength. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, when you, she was able to combat like negativity and still turn it into a platform and focus on that platform had nothing to do with some, the criticism that she received everything to do with that energy. I'm going to manipulate it to a positive space mm. and leverage that to the benefit of the children that she impacts and the girls that she impacts. And I thought mm. to me that was um, resounding, you know, because you have to be, you know, if, if you have that kind of platform, if you don't want to use your seat at the table, you need to get up. Get up. And she used her seat in a way that really just touches and it ripples. And it's just for the want to, ever be close to that to me is just powerful, you know? So you don't, you don't have to be the loudest noise in the room, but you can still have the most impact in the room. Absolutely. And, and that spoke to me. That's yeah, a tweet. Very, very. That look, yeah. I, I had to write a little bit of that down. I'm not gonna steal it because that's yours. Um, but, <laughs> but after you <laughs> use it- later in case I forget, you know, I was- right, right, right. <laughs> Cause after you use it, I'm sharing. Uh, and we don't, we don't call it quiet, <laughs> Well, I don't call it quiet. I call it meticulously observant. Um, a lot of times people will um, observe something and just speak on it. Um, I see how your mind works. Like sometimes we can tell if we're going down the right path with you, oh, because we'll see a facial expression. I say, oh, I need to divert. Uh, that's not what she was really asking. <laughs> so see, most the public doesn't see we're on zoom and we're doing our podcast so they only hear the audio part of it um we get the immediate feedback so um yeah it's it's definitely a quiet strength but we just see you take in all the information and then kind of focus your thoughts around that and whereas you know i'm i'm very off the cuff so when i get it i want to say to me i'm like no nah, nah, we, we gotta talk uh -uh. so, so no nah, i had a <laughs> I had a boss one time and he call, he would call me Miss Subliminal Message. So it's like, you would never say like, no, or you're trash, or I can't believe you're asking me this. But he's like, but the look on your face, and I had to work on that, right? Because it could be, you know, misconstrued, you lose business with, with a nasty look on your face. But he was like, the look on your face is, I cannot believe that you are even asking me this garbage. <laughs> like, like, you're lucky that you're a band ahead of me, that you could fire me, is the only reason why I'm completing this task. So when he said it like that, and I was like, oh, wow, OK. Um, just It's such a way to describe somebody. Right? <laughs> you, know, you have to change. 
I had one other thing with uh, one of my one of my best friends. His name is um, Vince. We call him VTech, and we kind of recalled like the first day we met, and he said, "Oh you're, yeah, we're cool now, but I have to tell you that first day we met, if I were lost and I needed directions." You would be the last person I asked, <laughs> just on the way that you came. And I, so, and this is going back many years, probably like twenty years ago. So I've grown. Right. Evolve. Smallbizengine.com. We do consultations. I have grown. <laughs> I have grown right. since then. But you know, you, you learn. Sometimes the old me sneaks in there every now and again. It's who you are. It it took you from there to here. That's all. Yeah, that's it. You modified. You modified somewhere. somewhere. (laughs) Ryan, don't you say a word. Be be, you. Be quiet. Don't you say that. You see me me playing my position. Husband one on one. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) We did have a little drama when we met. Anyway, we moved on. That'll be on the after show. (laughs) So. So guys, how do you prepare for a speaking engagement? Like give 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 everybody one tip, resource, clue, or just a peek under the tent um, into how you prepare for a speaking engagement. Um, so I'll start. I actually um, so I want to thank uh, oh Miss Small Business Engine. So she actually uh, got me involved in my first one. So I've been involved since with uh, Miss Corporate America, Women on the Rise uh, as a hosting as a host there. Um, so I actually went to Oaks. I know she's highly experienced. I know she's great at it. Um, so I actually sat down with her and prepared some kind of things to expect and also be prepared for the unexpected. Um, so we kind of just went through a, a quick walkthrough and from there, and I guess, and then from that first experience, I kind of just went back to what she was kind of showing me and guiding me through. And I just applied that going forward. I feel like every time, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming as you have more engagement, she obviously you get that flow and it just becomes second nature. Um, so. Yeah. Whenever the, the world opens up again, I'm very excited to get back out there. Yeah, it's kind of it's like my brother was like, he listens to our podcast. Hey, Colin. And he was like, oh, y'all finally caught your rhythm. So everyone <laughs> gets better and better for when yeah. you start. The early, early fans will tell you the truth. But I think with you, Rio, I think because um, we're talking about, you know, speaking and speaking from, you know, a position of um, expertise. But when you're hosting, that's a completely different, that's a different lane. Like we, you know, like with the four of us, we're not hosting, <laughs> you know, because you have to be with a lot of ad libs. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when you know somebody's not ready, or if the contestant's not ready, or next week, you've got to be prepared to fill that space, you know. Yeah. And that's not where I shine. I don't know about you guys, but I think that hosting—I think you do very well at it. That hosting—that's that's a different cup of tea. Um, mm-hmm. But you. what it's it really still, it's it still it still motivates the crowd. Absolutely. Is it what? It's also the energy oh. of the crowd. Um, you hear comedians all the time. They're like, "Ooh, I might have stunk that one up because maybe the crowd's not feeling them at first, and you can kind of go down or keep going." But mm-hmm. the energy is very important. But also, what you're saying, uh, which I get also, and the energy, if the energy is not in a, a great direction, you got to, you know, kind of bring something through and, and shine through it. Um, but it was a challenge, but it was fun, and I was, you know, hungry to do the next one. Um, so I'm learning. And then, obviously, with you all and your platforms, and now meeting Suzette. Um, Suzette, I'll be tuning in. I'll be following you closer now. Uh, <laughs> well, you learn from those that are experts at what they do. Um, right. So I'm excited about that. One of the things that I do it, is- I would say for me, it's it's, it's preparation. Again, I think. Yeah. Oh. No, go ahead, B. Yeah. No, go ahead, Suzette. That, that delay will kill us. Go, go ahead, Suzette. <laughs> I was going to say, um, you know, one of the things I think is important is to get very comfortable with your content. You know, and people have different- you know, routines, but when you're comfortable with your content, then you don't have to worry so much about memorization. You can just talk to your audience. You you have a better chance of connecting with them because you can make it a little bit more conversational. You don't have to rely on your PowerPoint slides as much. You know, um, I remember years ago, I worked for a nonprofit in, in California and public speaking was not my thing. And they had me doing this presentation to some Wall Street company. And I was memorizing those decks. But let there be one distraction, and I forgot for a moment what I was going to say. <laughs> I had the deer in the headlights look, literally. Yeah. And We've I didn't know been, any man. better back yeah. then, because I was talking about stuff that I didn't really like anyway, and I couldn't connect to. 
but it's just really important to again walk in your lane but spend time with the content when i'm preparing i literally keep going over my talking points not memorizing just reading through reading through you know getting comfortable sometimes speaking them so i see how it feels when it comes off my tongue because the written word doesn't flow the same way as a spoken word mm-hmm. you know so just just get comfortable with with the topic and and the gist of it and and what you're saying so that when you deliver it it literally just flows out mhm yeah, I like when, um, you know, slides are there as a reference, but if you're reading off your slide, I'm like, you could have just forwarded me the deck. Right. And I, I would be, I'd be golden. So I, you know, I'm a good reader. Come on. Don't do that to me. Please don't My do that. My comprehension is there. All right. Yeah. No, no. Say something yeah. to me that I can't just read off your deck. So absolutely. And it was funny though, because even with the podcast movement, I played it for B. I recorded the entire speech and listened to it over and over and over. Like, I mean, a week before. So I was like, I'm good. And then we got in that room and we actually were doing it. I said, oh my God, man. Like, I completely forgot everything. I I was like, oh, am I talking about this now or that now? So I'm a big proponent of just bullet points on power slides, uh, well, on PowerPoint slides. I know that there's sometimes people put paragraphs underneath and I'm like, like you said, oh, I could have read that. Like, you're just, gonna, you're just giving me the same thing. You're just regurgitating what's up there. I could, I could do that. But, um, you know, since we did podcast movement, I've done a couple things of like um, community centers and stuff. Like, and I'm telling you, when Suzette told me that, I really took that that point of, it's your story. Whatever you're gonna say, really make it personal to you, right? Because, like you said, you couldn't connect with that not like not the nonprofit itself, but what they wanted you to talk about. You you if you can't connect to the information, it makes it so much harder. So if you talk about something that's personal to you, at the end of the day, uh, what I did, and especially in that one, because I think my portion was called um, "Vulnerability is Strength" or "Strength and Vulnerability," and it, I went back to those emotions of my story and then that ties you into the story so it just it just made it a lot easier um so with these kids we do the same things right we talk about things that would impact them but also how it impacted us at that age or just now so it all works out yeah for me you know it's a uh if you guys watched uh, a different world relax relate release yeah you know? Um, it, you, um, in getting comfortable with your content, uh, with preparation to get comfortable, to be able to, to speak to the content, um, is once you have it and you know it, then you're able to relax, right? Sp- speaking is usually a tense situation for people. Um, but if, you know, to, to this point, once you know your content, then it's just relax and, and, and get there, you know, get going. Um then you relate and be able to relate to to your audience whoever it is you're speaking to whether it's being in person it's much easier to do it while you're in person but even on zoom calls um be able to relate to to your audience so that they can buy in uh to you and what you're saying um and and uh and then release right just um let it flow let it flow um the the thing that i had to learn was uh, with giving presentations is Unless there's somebody in there who's, who's helping prepare, they don't know if you make a mistake when you're when you're deck or your speaking point. So just let it flow. When you make a mistake, I used to again be that guy that um, I would make a mistake and I had to be right on point and I had to find my space again. Um, but then you know, with podcast movement, actually, I uh, and some other presentations that I've given, but I had to learn that even if I make a mistake uh, or say something out of order. I can fix it. Just relax, stay calm, and you can fix it. And the audience doesn't know any, doesn't know anything different. So um, you can still deliver. And if they're if they're bought into you because you've been relating to them the entire time, then it doesn't feel any different. And you just keep it moving. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I also tell people I have no sense, right? Like I'm, I'm. <laughs> I just think some things are just funny sometimes. So when I mess up now. I kind of laugh, I make a joke, and then we keep it moving, right? Because again, B, like you said, they have no clue, right? Sometimes I think they know like, okay, this is a mishap, 
but they really have no clue on what I messed up on, right? Or even if it's really a mess up. But at the end of the day, you know, you crack a joke, um, and then you just kind of keep them moving, so it works out. Yeah, absolutely. So the one thing about many hands, and we're called many hands because of the, the saying that many hands make light work. So what we're all passionate about is not only our business and success, um, bringing others with us, but really having impact in the community and the communities we live and serve. So right now we're at um, not only a time of, you know, division, um, we're at just, it's very, it's very tense. Um, there are a lot of things going on in society, in um, politics, in our communities. Um, and we are, we all use our voice to have an effect on moving us, our country, our communities from a negative place into a positive place. One of the main things that we could do um, is voting. Mm, yeah. So my question now is, um, I was gonna go right into predictions, but I'll hang tight on that. I think we could close there, but, <laughs> cause it's getting kind of crazy. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> this is where we shine. Um, so, not the immediate question, but how has, so since everybody's now more divided and we're used to being vocal, have our relationships with friends and acquaintances, um, colleagues, have they changed? And have you been confident in those circumstances to use your voice? I feel that I know, I definitely have a better idea of where people stand. Um, some of it's been surprising, some of it has not. Um, at the same rate, whether they're colleagues, friends, some of them are actually clients of mine. Um, so I got to keep that in mind also. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, I just try to refrain from having those conversations directly with them. Obviously, this brought that's something different, but I just try to separate the two. But I know where I stand at the end of the day, you know, with them pinning their posts and kind of what I'm seeing out there. So, right. So, yeah, are you lot. confident enough to, um, like, if they write something reckless uh -huh. on social media? Do you respond? Do you ignore? Do you block? I do a pretty good job of ignoring blocking. It depends. I sent you guys a, uh, an example of something, a screenshot of what I received the other day. I know you don't get a lot of negative stuff um, on my post. Um, that one actually drove me. My heart told me to kind of speak up on that one. Uh, but at the end of the day, I, I typically just ignore it. And this is just blatant, blatant disrespect, and that's going to deserve a block. But Rio, I think yeah. the reason you answered that is because it was your post that they responded to. So if it's if it's typically like somebody's post, I always mm -hmm. tell people, don't come on my page with your nonsense. <laughs> if it's on my page, keep scrolling. Right. You do not have to like what my ideas are. Right. Um, but again, um, I when I see posts, I try not to read comments. You guys know I don't watch local news. I don't watch national news. I get my news other places, but I try not to because that negativity will seep in and it mm -hmm. will seep into my spirit. So I try not to do it. Um, but just real quick, um, I, I have a very broad groups of friends. Mm -hmm. uh, they all know where I stand. Um, I love when people try to take your fiscal life and they say, well, you should believe this because of the amount of money you make. Well, first off, you don't know what I make. Two, yeah. I appreciate the assumption, though, that I'm <laughs> at that level. Thank you for very much. Um, <laughs> um, but even so, again, people over profit, right? Like, um, it's not about, you know, it's not, a, it just drives me crazy. It's not about what I make because it's really not about me, right? Like, the, the money that I make is for, other things that will help make people's lives better. Mm -hmm. um, now, do I want some material things? Absolutely, but I don't need 10 houses when I can just live in, because I can only live in one. Uh, <laughs> I live in one, but then I use that money for other things for other people. So um, yeah, my friends, we have an understanding. We don't talk about it. Um, and if they cross a the line, they get called out. And I would, you know, if, if they feel like I cross the line, I would want them to do that to me, because at the end of the day, me and my friends, we're more than friends. You know, yeah. we're family, we're tribe. So, um, but yeah, it's it's surprising sometimes. Right. Right. And sorry to jump back in. I do want to say, um, so I feel like it's also not my job to educate someone who doesn't understand the current climate. 
Um, so in that circumstance, the, the comment that was made on my social media, they were actually incorrect. So whether they take that and say, oh, now you're wrong, that's on them. But I wanted to take a, a time to kind of educate them on that particular um, instance. Um, but other than that, you know, I'm very confident. I won't let anybody blatantly just disrespect me, uh, what I stand for. But I just know where I stand. And I see where people 2020 shed a huge light on a lot of things and a lot of surprises, good and bad. So. I've um, compartmentalized because um, I separate work from personal. Mm -hmm. um, work relationships for obvious reasons, uh, but I've observed a lot. I feel very disheartened by the things that I've seen and I've, I've heard. Um, nothing blatant, um, but I've definitely appreciated the authenticity and, and the honesty with which people have shared because it, I've learned a lot about people. I've learned a lot about the people that I'm around on a regular basis. Um, and what that has done is that has fueled me to get involved in other ways. That has fueled me to get involved in encouraging as many people as possible to vote. I volunteered with the NAACP uh, to make phone calls, text messages, you know, reach out to people. They're going to send me a list along with a lot of other volunteers, but I'll be reaching out to people who don't usually vote. And those people on, on my list would be my responsibility to get them to go out and vote. And so I decided and, it, and, and I had to think about it for a little while because mm -hmm. you get angry, you know, you get really angry. But I certainly don't agree with responding with violence and things of that nature. I think all of those things take away from the movement and from progress. And so I've been really thoughtful about how can I how can I make a difference? What can I do? with my voice, with my time, with my resources. And so that's what I've decided to do. I've decided to make sure that I educate people, that I reach out to people, that I support organizations mm -hmm. and just helping people to realize that you should vote, you know, because I think what happens a lot of times is that we look at election as politics and we think to ourselves, am I into politics? Am I not into politics? If I'm not into politics, then it's not my thing. It's everybody's thing yeah. because it's not about politics. At the local level, at the federal level, this is about our quality of life. This is about our communities. This is about our children. It right. all affects us. It is. It seems far removed from us. The White House seems very distant from us, like we can't ever get there unless we go on a tour. But everything that happens there affects us. And even if you voted before and you feel like you didn't get the result that you wanted, doesn't mean that you should give up. I'm sure. really encouraging everyone to vote, whether you do the mail by vote ballot or whether you go to the polls, whatever you choose to do, it is so important to make your voice heard. If you do not vote, you have absolutely no chance at making change. That decision, is, you, you, get the, you get those results right away. <laughs> you have no chance at making change. But if you do go and vote, then you stand a pretty good chance of making change. And so I think this needs to be personal to every single person who has the right to vote. Take it personally. Do what you can do to help your community at the local level and at the at the federal level. Absolutely. No vote. It's, it's definitely an obligation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an obligation and and if you don't vote, you you really don't have a right to I mean, it's your opinion, so you can always voice it, but do you really have a right to voice your opinion if you didn't put in? Um, and not only, um, again, at the federal level, but at all levels, you need to vote because um, you, know, you vote for the president, and, and that is sort of the, the sort of leader of the country. But um, a lot of those laws that impact us, um, positive or negatively, um, those laws are made at lower levels, at local levels. And so it's really important that you spend your time um, researching, or if you don't know, ask. Um, and and if you don't feel confident in the answer you got, ask somebody else. Um, Google is, we mentioned earlier, Google is free. Um, a lot of that stuff, it's public knowledge. You can look and you can research um, well enough, right? We know that November 3rd is today, so that day is not changing. So you have from now until November 3rd to do your research. Don't sleep on it. Don't wait until the last minute. Um, if you can vote early in your states, vote early. Um, again, mail in, you know, vote by mail, whatever the case is, um, it, you know, it's important. Um, as far as my relationships, I've been a little bit of everywhere. Um, I have blocked, you know, I, I tried to have, um, 
I've tried to have conversations um, with people who maybe who, whose opinions might be different, and I'm okay if your opinion is different. But then there's some there's some opinions that are just there's energy that's out there that I just don't need, um, and so I had to get that off my timeline, off my feed because it was it was coming, it was starting to, to bother me. Um, but again, there's conversations that that are being had that are good conversations. Um, and and I tend to uh, I tend to just I'm open I'm open minded and I will listen. But if it is coming, if your opinion is coming from the wrong place, uh, I'm you're done. I'm off of that. But if it's an honest, hey, I need to learn more or, or you know show me your experience or your perspective, I'm open to sharing that. But um, but yeah, it's, it's gotta be in the right place. Yeah. Oh, what um, about you though? Cause you have a, a wide range of relationships personally and professionally as well, especially with client base. Like, so how do you manage that? Um, I've gotten stronger, I would say over the last few years. So when I, you know, from high school to present, my, um, whether it's my circle of friends or you know colleagues, it's always looked like the United Nations, you know, and I welcome that level of diversity. And I always feel good when you could introduce me to something in your culture, whether it's you know food, garment, it doesn't matter. You know, I I, I enjoy those things as as I love to travel. Um, but it's just that I feel like the offensive offensive rec offensive recently have you have to have a more aggressive uh, stance. I don't feel like there's room for um, a, a pa passive approach because I feel like it, things must change. So for me, um, there are, there's a faction of, um, of people, black people, black men who don't feel like voting is for them. You know, I feel, you know, that we need to, to change that perspective. Why do you feel that way? The system's, you know, not here. And, you know, uh, Tuan, you had something posted on your page. And, you know, when I and I wrote back, you know, a system cannot fail those it was never meant to protect by right? mm -hmm. W. E. Du Bois. And because it was never meant to protect. And, you know, so my thing is, um, yes, do everything. And I think you can call any NAACP um, office because they, they will um, accept help, especially during this time. There's a lot of canvassing efforts, whether it's on foot or by phone. Um, so that's one way. But also knowing your local um, lawmakers, because it's about that legislation, um, whether it's down on the school board level, you know, because I've seen things that and, and I've never been the kind. I have two young children, but, you know, PTA has never been in my wheelhouse or intention, I have no intention to be in there right. until I realized last year that, you know, um, my kids without my voice and being their advocate, they will be overlooked. And I'm like, well, why didn't they get that opportunity? Well, this is a program that I actually existed in this school and you told me not to worry about, worry about it just to find out, you know, five, six months later that the program was actually going on and my son didn't have access to it. So because I insisted, that he does have access, now we have to play catch up. But why didn't you think that he deserved to have access? Let's talk about the school board level. Let's talk about the state level and what's going on in terms of, you know, where monies are going and affordable housing. And, you know, we touched on this, I believe last episode or the one before about the homelessness issue and affordable housing here in central Florida. And it will break your heart knowing that you have teenagers going, trying to make it just to 18, trying to make it just to graduation so they can go into the military or have or know where their meal is coming from because their entire lives, they don't know where food is. Mm -hmm. That comes from legislation that will protect our youth. Um, the federal level, which is a, the biggest debacle in the history of modern politics, you know, is to the point where supposedly this leader of the free world is now subject to um, COVID and coronavirus and Half the population doesn't even believe him because nobody believes the information that comes out of the White House. And we're supposed to be an example. Like, and I've always felt, you know, even before previous administrations, when we um, tell other countries how to live, it's a, it's, it's a mistake because there's not a right way, one right way. Um, but we were still looked to when we had to have a voice um, to speak up for those who, who were being taken advantage of 
you know, like for you know, when they invaded Kuwait, you can go back, you know, all these invasions in modern history, like you invade in the country in modern history, like of course we have to step in. Right. Of course we, you know, what but we only step in when we want to free the right people, whether it's because of a resource, you know, because let's define wealth. What is real what is real wealth? You know, it's not just money, it's resource. Yeah. And when it's a resource that we want to protect, then we're on the forefront. So, you know, federally uh, nationally, that we have a lot of work to do as well. Um, so for me, uh, for my relationships, um, and I saw this online, yeah, we could disagree about food and pizza toppings. We cannot disagree about racism. Yeah. And, yeah. and so it's hurt. Like we've had, um, in our neighborhood, we've had uh, friends, loosely termed, loosely used acquaintances that we would, you know, get together and do things with. But once we knew where they stood or the comments, like they've made overt racial comments, we had to cut them out of our lives, which also meant severing relationships for our children. So in anything we do, just like when speaking, we said that you have to personalize it so that you made the best point. Personalize it. Personalize anything you do. It transcends speaking. Personalize it so the mission means something. The same thing with voting and caring about our future. Personalize it. Um, make it mean something. Shed a tear if you have to. Get emotional if you have to. Get angry if you have to. Create change because you have to. That's, <clears throat> those are great points because a, a friend of mine told me not too long ago, um, and he's very like-minded like us, he said, hey man, you can't, you can't ruin your your business relationships over politics. And I said, you know, what is for me is for me. That person cannot stop <laughs> what is meant for my, my greatness and my purpose. Now, yeah, it may hurt because it's a personal relationship. And again, my friendships, I mean, some of them go back 25 years, like it's crazy, 30 years. Um, but, you know, one of the things that y'all talked about earlier was um, obligation about voting. Um, I believe it's an obligation. And now I'm speaking to um, specifically black and brown people, uh, minorities in general. Um, you know, it's a privilege because there was obviously a time in this country where it was not an option and people actually died, like lost their lives just yeah. trying to register people to vote. Yeah. Like think about how crazy that is. So when, oh, you, tell me, oh, mm -hmm. so when you tell me as a, as, as a black man, and these, again, these are kind of personal conversations I have. When you tell me as a black man, my vote don't count. Excuse me. I don't give a damn what you think in that respect. What I want you to understand is this: it's bigger than you. It's not about you. Um, it's about those that come after you. And understand it's about policies that are happening, changes that are happening today that will affect your nieces, your nephews, your children, um, people you don't know, but who cares? There were people that sacrificed for you that didn't know you. Right. So again, <laughs> um, I mean, when we talk about church bombings, we talk about you know, um, in Mississippi, like registering people to vote and, you know, missing poll work. Like this is real life. People lost their real lives trying to make it a difference. So um, I am ashamed sometimes of, of my involvement in some of these things that I'm not as involved. Um, most of y'all on this panel know, I believe that um, if I go out here and make this money at the level I can, that that will make a, a great impact. Um, and then I can get to the personal, like in people's faces type deal. Um, but I have to be, I have to, me personally, I have to have a better balance um, and I will, but um, it's just, it's amazing to me that people that look like me that will tell me I will not vote for X, Y, and Z because I don't feel like my voice counts. When I sit and I look at your three-year-old and your seven-year-old and you tell me your voice don't count, but what, what yeah. you love and care about them, so what does that matter? Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm sorry, I, that just irritates me to the fullest. Yeah. I, I think we're in a time when, um, we're in a time when we can't, we can't just be responsible for ourselves. It's no longer about Correct. making sure that we vote or we get our ballot. We have to make sure that everyone we know or as many people as possible, that we're encouraging them to vote, that we're remove, removing the barriers to vote. You know, um, people, if you're not comfortable going to the polls because we're in the middle of a pandemic, you know, request your mail-in ballot. You know, every, every county has a supervisor of elections um, uh, website you know, go to the website, request your ballot. 
you need to request your ballot by October 24th. It's preferable that you do it before then, um, because what 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 the what they're really suggesting is that you mail that ballot by October 20th. And if you are not comfortable with the 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 post the postal system, you can take that ballot to an early voting site and drop it in a container, a mm -hmm. container that's set up just for the mail in ballot. If you don't trust the postal system, there are options. But I just you know implore everyone to take the time to reach out to everyone in your network, you know, um, and make sure they're going to vote, you know, if you're able to, because we all help in different ways. The way Twan is helping with his resources, I might not be able to help, but I know I'm committing to getting a list of people that I may not know, people who don't usually vote. I'm making a commitment to reach out to these people and encourage them to get out and vote. Like we have got to come together in ways that we probably didn't think we had to do in the past but we can all play our part. And it's really important that, that we look at that. We need to look at um, what's important to us in our communities. You know, O mentioned homelessness for teenagers. That's a real issue. And a lot of people don't realize that a lot of these high school students, they're homeless, they're, they're kicked out of their homes. You know, some of the students, the youth who, who come out of the closet and tell their parents that they're, they're gay, they get kicked out of their home. And they're homeless. That is those those are facts. Yeah. And they're still figuring out how to go to school and get through school. So it's important for us to pay attention to the issues in our community, the things that we want for our kids, and make sure that we're voting for the right people for the right legislation. And understand that like we've all agreed, this is personal. This affects every single person at the most minute level. Mm -hmm. It affects us. And yeah. so we can no longer distance ourselves from it. For those of us who have, you know, if, if you think that your vote doesn't count, then it doesn't hurt you to go vote. But if you think it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. you have nothing to lose by going to vote. Say yeah, that to the people in the back. All right. <laughs> and, and listen, if, if it wasn't, if your vote didn't matter, if it wasn't so important, they would not be trying so hard to suppress your vote and to make sure that you don't go vote or you can't go vote. Okay. So just on the face of it, if, if you know, if it didn't matter, it wouldn't matter. But it clearly does matter just to that we vote um, because they are trying to suppress the vote uh, in so many different ways right now that, um, you know, in the past, I think it was it was it was um, they didn't do it in plain sight. But right now it's it's very blatant and overt um, and in your face that we don't want you to vote because we are worried about what your vote will do to the results of this election. So take that and again, wear it as a badge of, of courage, as a badge of, of honor. You know, again, to Twan's point, people have died, people have, have been injured, have lost their lives, just so that we have the ability and the right to express ourselves by voting. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we say right now we're right, vote like you, your life depends on it. Um, and it's not just yours. Again, it's it's your life and it's generations behind us, uh, you know, that, that are going to be impacted by this very particular election uh, because of, of what's on the table um, and the stakes are high. And it is not it's not, um, you know, we're not trying to be. Uh, we're, we're not trying to scare anybody. We're not trying to. Um, you know, but it's time to sound the alarm. It's time to ring the alarm, people. Like, yeah. this is not a joke. It's not a game. Um, and there's no better time than the present. Yeah, and absolutely. I want to say something real quick. Be your first time. time for this to be your first time. Just piggybacking on what the, actually Twan said earlier and what B actually kind of restated is for those that are thinking their vote doesn't matter, a lot of, I think overall they're thinking short term. We got to switch that mindset to start thinking long term. It's what the issue is. Once we can switch that to going long term, like, hey, this is what's going to impact us going forward, like uh, Thomas and your nieces, your nephews. Uh, but we got to get out of that selfish mind state. It's all about what what's going to help us out going forward. Um, but yeah, he said it best. I mean, your vote does count. That's why they're trying to scare us not to. So, yeah. But the funny thing is that um, right now you'll see, oh, don't worry about the national election. It's, it's locally what's really going to impact you until 
your living history and you see that we lost a justice and they're trying to replace. So if you don't understand the power of the presidency and the executive branch and how that will affect 40 years, and we've never adequately uh, replaced Thurgood Marshall, let's be real. Right. Nope. So we have never adequately had representation since then. And it doesn't seem like we will in a long time. We're dealing with a lot of youth on that on that board, on the, on the Supreme Court that will, um, how will they uphold the law? Because, you know, everybody that's been surrounded by this administration has not um, done their duty, their fiduciary responsibility as it's kept. It's one thing if you don't believe it, but when it's your obligation to enforce or carry something out in accordance to the law, but you don't do that, then you can't be trusted. It's one thing, you know, now you're mixing in your core values with your duties and that should not be the case. Um, so, you know, we've been at this for, for a while. I think there's some really good conversation. I really feel like we can go on um, for a, a while more, but I'm gonna pose our final question. Y'all ready? Sometimes, sometimes we go deep, no, sometimes not. But in keeping with the grain of the conversation, um, and it's not, it's not gonna be that easy because there's so many, but what do you think? So social justice is very important to us. This podcast is about business and social consciousness. It always will be because both factors are important and we do believe that we, there is room to address both. What do you think is the biggest social justice issue that you, know, you will address in the coming year? Hmm. You sounds so great. Yeah, I mean, it's so, a great question. Uh, so, so I'll, I'll, cause y'all know how I think about this stuff. So we talked about homeless teenagers, right? Um, I don't think people realize how many homeless families um, exist in, in today's climate, especially, um, you know, just, just really, we're involved with some programs in a lot of the county schools where they, it's called FIT, Families in Transition. And they provide meals for families that live in a lot of these hotel motels, you know, the weekly rentals. Um, and a lot of that is week to week work. It's based on week to week work for these parents and, and things of that nature. So, but again, I, I didn't realize it until probably about um, six to eight years ago when my sister opened up an organization that focused on that. So um, we talked about people over profit just really quickly, the, the foundation that we will be launching. Um, that will, one of the, the factors will be um, homelessness um, and initially families that are affected by it. Um, so I just know that that is a social issue that we will be addressing um, and we will be diligent about it. We will be connecting with local leaders about it because uh, it just bothers me that you can drive by a car and see a full family in that car that are living in an area just that they shouldn't be. So uh, we're gonna deal with that and that's, that's mine, that's mine. You know, I, I, um, mm -hmm. I have to kind of piggyback on that, Twan, and I'll tell you why. Um, the moratorium on evictions mm. um, yeah. has been lifted, yep. if not everywhere in some states. And um, and the same thing uh, with the electricity the moratorium for those um, service providers who who had a moratorium has been lifted as well, and so I think that we're about to see such a huge fallout um, and impact from the pandemic that we haven't yet seen, and that homeless number is going to really increase, you know, because a number of companies that have gone out of business, a number of families that have been impacted, um, and you know with homelessness, there's going to come probably an increase in crime, um, mm -hmm. you know, because people, people are trying to live, they're trying to take care of their families. And, yeah. you know, um, you know, th there's just a domino effect. And so I would definitely agree with the homelessness. Um, but I think that we're going to see an increase in a number of areas in our communities. And that is why it's so important to have the right leaders in place, because these are these are real issues that we're having to deal with. And, you know, uh, according to the experts, which I don't think anyone is really an expert on COVID-19, but um, <laughs> OK, <laughs> we're not done with it. Right. right. Because there's no there's no vaccine yet. So, yeah. Well, who trusts that vaccine? 
Let me sidebar. That was excellent. Yeah, and there was that I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm no, not making you. the point because you said some clear. honest truth. <laughs> I'm like, no. Pause. And there's that too. You know, a good vaccine mm -hmm. takes five to ten years to develop. Yeah. Right. And a government that has lies, you're gonna inject. I'm good. I'm good with your Tuskegee experiment. That I might be a mix of bleach. I don't know what's in that thing. No. I know. We, we talked about this yesterday. Blanket. I'm good yeah. with the stimulus yeah. bring <laughs> your Tuskegee yeah. experiment. All of that, you're not going to do that to me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. We're cool. Yeah. Thank you. But oh, science and technology changed <laughs> over the years. So now we can speak and get it out quickly. You know, we can get Pause. the vaccine. It'll be, everything's great. Pause. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, <laughs> the maturation time of the process, please, please. Easy. Easy. please. Okay, for yeah. me, socially justice wise, I am passionate about the wealth gap right. because I see it as um, intentional wrongs. It's intentional when um, they're still lending atrocities when you know black women don't have access to funding and capital for their businesses. Um, the how-to, the know-how, that information is still very guarded, um, and those are resources that should be you know publicly available. The the leveling, level the field should be level at that point. Yeah. Um, whether you know the qualifications and all of that, I understand those kind of things. It is what it is, especially when it comes to numbers. Um, but you know, when we're specifically not lending, we're specifically not giving access to, um, you know, when our homes. There was another study that was recently done. Um, same home, same layout, same neighborhood. Um, the one under black ownership was. Um, um, what word am I looking for? Appraised. Thank you. Appraised. It was appraised. You know, thirty percent lower than the home that was under white ownership. And those kind of things, you know, most, you know, wealth is created, you know, in real estate. And so, you know, educationally, we have to combat that. Um, basic education, we have to combat that. I mean, we're very fortunate that basic academia is available. So we have to make sure that everybody knows how to get it. And we have to make sure that books and resources get to the schools. Um, and it starts there and then it continues to mature. And then we encourage, you know, to get property and resources as early as possible and 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 flip as early as possible so you continue to, to gain and rise. And um, I don't think there are enough conversations about that. I remember just having like, you know, um, wanted to refer a financial advisor to somebody and not, you know, I didn't want to get in their business. I didn't even ask and I don't even care, but it's more like it's been such a help to me you know, maybe you should give him a talk to and the conversation shut down. People are afraid to talk about money and it's not like I wanted a loan, you know? Sure. So I don't know what the, the fear was. It was really like, hey, you know, what do you have to lose? You know, what do you have to lose? At least talk to him. I'm not getting a kickback, you know, <laughs> just talk right. to him, you know? But, you know, we come from a place where those conversations are so hard and I want those conversations to open up. So that, you know, because there, there are people who have this information and have this knowledge. And, and I think that, that that's going to help because we see how much um, we cannot protect ourselves when we are at that disadvantage and how we've been le leveraged against during these last few years. That's good. Yeah. You know, for me, it's, um, it's systemic racism. You know, I think all of these points fall under that umbrella of systemic racism and because it it is systematic it it, it perme permeates into so many different um areas the wealth gap um homelessness um uh, our abilities to to advance in 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 the career space um our schools our education systems the books that our our, our kids are getting um you know the census right it, they 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 try to cut the census short, right? Because the census is how we're counted and, and how those, those funds are, are, mm -hmm. are uh, burdened. You know, it's it just, you know, we talk about, uh, there's conversations about defunding the police. Um, and I don't know that, you know, when we say defunding it, we don't mean take all the money from the police department, right? But we can take some of that money, that over overly extended budget um, and the, the the amount of resources that the police officers, the police officers, police unions have, um, is it's incredible that you could take some money from them and either give training and, and have uh, you know give that money to the school systems or give it give it to 
um, uh, train uh, public public health, public uh, you know psychologists, yeah, you know, so that we can deal with some of these mental health issues. Um, uh, and, and I think that being able to number one, let's let's have the open conversation. I think conversations are being had. Um, you know, I, the current uh, occupant of the White House does not believe there's, there's systemic racism, but we know, right, that it is and it's been, um, and being able to acknowledge it is the first step. Uh, and then let's put, let's do the work to um, try to, to right those wrongs, whether it's um, reparations, right? I, I just saw that um, California has really, um, has a bill that's been signed into law that they're taking a look at reparations uh, for slavery. Um, it has to happen, and and you know if it doesn't, we're going to continue having the the same conversations, the same arguments, um, you know. And if we really want this country to um, truly want this country to heal and uh, be one and kind of whole, um, we got to address it, uh, and that's you know, and, and it's going to take some work. Before you go, real just real quick, be what you yeah. just mentioned about defund the police. I was having a conversation with an officer the other day who, you know, he was, you know, they're trying to take money. For, I said, you know, what's, what's crazy is how about we just divert a little bit of that and go to community outreach, outreach mm -hmm. still involving the police, right? Like it's, it's not, it's just, you know, I told him, I said, it's not about taking the funds, right? It's about finding ways to better use them. And I said, even involving the police departments, the police unions, like even involving you guys, it's just diverting it a little bit. It's not really, and you know, he didn't want to hear it, but I get it, right? I always tell people, I'm not going to change your mind. You're not going to change mine, but let's talk, mm -hmm. right? You may give me insight yeah. that I, or mm -hmm. a perspective I didn't have, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'm sorry, Rio, I'm sorry. No, don't ever apologize for speaking truth, man. Uh, we're all family at the end of the day. Uh, mine, I'm going to go, I'm definitely very passionate about um, you know, being a voice for systemic racism and just definitely equal opportunity. And I say that more so within the, the workplace. There's still a lack of uh, leadership, you know, at high levels in a lot of these corporate companies. Um, so any opportunity I get, I make sure I'm a voice for that. And obviously supporting black businesses. Um, but these are things that we, can, that we can all do now, as long as we're putting some effort in that, you know, we can work toward a greater goal. Those are some things that I'm, I'm definitely very passionate about. Absolutely. Well, guys, and another one. <laughs> I believe that's Craig Martin. Yeah. And another one. <laughs> oh, um, oh yeah, Twan's gonna get mad at me because before you would always say people over profit, and I actually used right. the hashtag until I realized you actually like own the name. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't yeah, sue sure. anybody. It was uh -oh. not malintended. <laughs> No, nah, look, the, the more yeah, we say it, the more recognizable it becomes and the okay. more open the public okay. will, will be too. Yes. So It'll good. be a shame to stumble upon it because I've been there when people steal your content. You're like, oh, player, yeah. we we yeah. broke bread together. How could right. you do this? Yeah. Yeah. They don't How share. They just take it. And no, then they, they take it. On theirs, and you're like, oh. Okay. Right. And put an accent Tell over the right. E and be like, it's different. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. But um, we came together and we did speak on speaking up to speaking out. And I think that um, it has impact. This conversation is going to go on. We're going to publish it again. Um, it'll be on our website, um, on our Facebook page to uh, replay. Um, Suzette, again, thank you so much for um, gracing yeah. us. Um, you always come with information, knowledge, and you change the landscape. So thank you so much for bringing you to this table. Um, there's nothing else like it uh, for me. And I mean that from my heart. Um, fellas, what do we always say? Grand opening? Grand, Grand closing. Close. All right. We're out.